And we're back with question number two in the uh, Do Not uh, Pass Go prison and its impact on the black community. Um, question two, what do you feel is the biggest reason for such a disproportionate number of blacks in prison? Start with you. Um, well, we were mentioning when we were kind of throwing out general ideas about why black people are overwhelming disparity in the prison system is that it was a legalization of slavery because we know that the 13th Amendment has abolished it, but it could be legal if they were in prison. So, if slavery is banned, but there is a way to make it legal, and we know that some people, kind of southern toward the Mason-Dixon line, feel that they should have never gotten rid of slavery and there's a way to make it legal again, then this would be the perfect way. I'm sorry you didn't sound very specific with your geography. <laughs> spoken, <laughs> spoken in true generalizations. Oh. <laughs> uh, what do you feel is the biggest reason for such a disproportionate number of blacks in, in the prison? Or in prison, I should say. Um, fear and stereotypes. Really plain and simple. They say these are the bad people and they send them to get the bad people on. Fortunately, all the bad people seem to be black these days, according to the news and everyone else. Yeah. So it's it's all based on fear, um, fear, racism, hate, all that mm -hmm. stuff. So if you put a stigma on a group of people, it doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, successful, or a failure. As soon as you're seen, you're seen as a criminal for the most part. Mm -hmm. So, still black. Yep. Either way, you're black. <laughs> um, we've just heard some of the more esoteric reasons on why um, blacks are in prison, but we are also in prison because of the fact that we are just criminalized more. Um, we are put in jail more often than not for crimes that are committed. Everybody commits crimes, but not everybody is punished the same for those crimes. Um, some of the crimes also include, um, like, such as drug. Um, when people, when African Americans are caught with drugs, they're often, more often than not, arrested for that, and they're often more jailed for that as well. And disproportionate numbers to our white and other racial counterparts. And so, those are some of the reasons on why African Americans are put in jail more often. Uh, what do you think could be done in, in order to take the numbers down from a policing standpoint, a policing standpoint, and from a uh, black community standpoint in terms of our numbers within prison? Do you think it's something that we have to do? Do you think it's something that they have to do? Yeah, it's both. Because um, we're not trying to give people a pass to break the law. No, we do have to hold accountability for when we break the law. But I'm just saying when everybody breaks the law, we all need to have the common law and everybody needs to face the same punishment for those crimes. But for the police, if you already have like a racial bias and you already have prejudice and you're going to feel a certain way towards people and you're afraid and you already have bias ingrained into your mentality, then that is going to really kind of cloud your judgment and you're going to go after these people, especially if you've grown up thinking this way. There needs to be some type of cultural sensitivity training. If you know you're racist, you do not need to be put into certain places with heavy black populations. Also, in the black um, community, maybe we can have more protective factors. But let me say that like not all black people are in inner cities. These are not war zones and all that. There are a lot of successful black people as well. But in some inner cities that do have heavy... African American populations, we need to get some protective factors going. We need to have some rec centers going for the youth. We need to have more jobs, more employments, more revenue generating so that there isn't crime because crime can be linked to another, a, a whole multitude of things. Daisha made a good point too about African American um, kids having recreation centers and things to do and also in schools African American kids are suspended at higher yeah. rates than Sports. their white counterparts yeah. so when you start suspending and expelling and doing those types of things to black children they're more likely to go into the prison mm -hmm. system and so um, from a school administrative 
perspective, we need to stop suspending our black kids yes. for at rates higher than their white counterparts. And we also need to, as a community, we need to lobby and fight for either A, to get more community and rec centers in our communities and things for our children to do because idle kids do not do good things usually. Actually, Deanna brought up a good point about the school administration system because if your city, if your schools are lacking funding and you don't have the proper resources, teachers are not paid, they don't feel like coming in to do their jobs, they have tenure, you can't fire them so they can go in the classroom, sit down, put their feet up, not teach their kids. That is a problem. There is a difference between the Frederick County public school system and then going to some place like Baltimore City Schools where they're going to have to walk through metal detectors to get into class and to learn so at that point these kids already feel criminalized for something that they have no control over having to take three to four buses in the morning that's ridiculous if these kids had the same opportunity a lot of the crime and a lot of these things would be eliminated if you gave these kids the same opportunity okay anything that Betsy DeVos is going to fix all that yes you can cut that <laughs> I do want to finish the point, though, about, you know, communities are taking responsibility for the crime and things that happen in their communities. There have been protests. There have been people who are going to their local, like, uh, political meetings and such to lobby and to say that we demand to have the same resources as people in other communities. It, we need to make sure, too, from a community standpoint, that we are providing legitimate things for our teens and our young people to do so that way we, they can flourish in a way that we know that they can flourish and create, as we always have been creating, some of the best inventions that are used to this day. That, that sounds like a lot of what, what other people around us can do. Is there something, do you think, specifically that black people can do uh, to, to help in terms of not being targeted as much. I know that's kind of a kind of a weird question, but is there anything that we can do outside of um, besides trying to infiltrate the system ourselves, but then that's where systematic discrimination and racism will hold you back. Mm -hmm. It's when we try to get into these schools, get denied and things like that. You put your address down on a resume bad things going in the trash if your name sounds unconventionally you know urban get resumes going in the trash or something so it, it happened it does happen not all the time but it does happen so I mean other than trying to infiltrate the system yourself trying to become lawyers yourself trying to become activists yourself so kind of really taking charge of your own community okay I mean the, the only way to kind of even start attempting to reverse the way things are is you'd have to start a movement again like the Black Panthers. So we kind of like police our own communities, but you know what happened to the Black Panthers. So sure do. You policing your own community just brings more police to your community because then you're a threat for policing your own community. So it's, it's a vicious cycle. They want you to get up off... <laughs> You know, get up off your, your your pants and go out there and get up and grab yourself by the bootstraps and help yourself. But once you start helping yourself, they see that as a threat as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a real catch twenty two. So. And Greg, there are a lot of good things that the Black Panther has yeah, done. Just a lot besides, of things. well, in addition to policing communities, they gave, they fed their kids, yeah, they gave much programs, mm -hmm. all those things, they started They did all a lot of stuff. community programs, you know, and it's, it's sad how their legacy has been very vilified, uh, skewed. Yeah. tainted, skewed. <laughs> skewed. <laughs> well, like I said, that's, mm -hmm. the, the root of how the whole movement started was based on that. Mm -hmm. So, that, that would be the only way to begin that kind of transformation in the community without without starting ourselves on that kind of level, I, then I don't know what else we could do. 
I guess each individual to take responsibility and do whatever it is they could do, but as far as it to be like a community movement would be much better and stronger, and, and that's where you'd have to start with something like that. But I don't know how they would let that happen again without a whole bunch of people going to prison and all of a sudden drugs popping up that haven't been there before. Yeah. Message. It's never you mean happened. to fund wars? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's never uh, happened. No, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> With all that being said, uh, we'd also like to plug you back to the website again, which is Uh While you're there, we uh, have a section where we promote black businesses at our recommended websites. We have everything from jewelry to artwork to whatever you can think of. There's a bunch of black businesses that we, uh, we push and support for free. So if you have one and you happen to see this, you can also contact us and we will push you out there for free through all the avenues that we have available to us. Also, a book of the month. This, uh, the, the BA recommended books of the month is, is a, basically a program for us to be able to get people to read outside of the normal literature that you're exposed to in, the, in our curriculums, in our systems within the school system. Um, get out some nice black authors, some nice different, some different stories, different perspectives, and maybe change your perspective. Nothing's better than a good book. Um, also, Black People You Should Know, that's another section that we have on our website. It talks about different people throughout uh, history that aren't talked about, again, in your schools that you should know about. So with all that being said, we'll come back to you later with the third question. Thanks.